Hello, my name is Bethany Molino, and I am the elementary art teacher at Wolchep Elementary School in Vienna, Virginia. I have the pleasure of teaching roughly 580 students a week for 60 minutes each. I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about what I'm learning about our brains, and I'm learning how amazing they are. I have a little buddy here. He's my brain buddy. See his eyes and his face. The way that it sits in our heads, our brains, is from like a side view. So it would be like this and the brain and the brain stem that comes down. That's this part that's at the bottom. One of the things I've been learning about is something called the neurosequential model and education. That's a really big word. Neurosequential. It basically means that your brain works in an order. There's a certain order that things function in. And this was developed by a gentleman named Dr. Bruce Perry. And as I'm studying the neurosequential model, I'm learning some amazing things. One of those things is that when our brain receives information, it receives it from the bottom of the brain, from the brain stem up. Our brains receive information and it comes up through the brain stem and it reaches the diencephalon, the limbic system, and then lastly, the cortex. The cortex is where we do our decision-making and where our reasoning and logic and self-control is contained up there. The control center of our brain is up here at the top. I've also seen people talk about the brain and they use something called the hand model. You can use either hand, right or left, but go ahead and hold your hand up. Fingers are together. This lower part of the brain, this is sometimes referred to as the barking dog. And the top of your brain closes over. This is the cortex. And this is sometimes referred to as the wise owl. So we have the lower part of the brain where the barking dog is, and we have the upper brain or the wise owl. There are two parts. There's a downstairs part of the brain. Um, this is kind of where your emotions are controlled. There's a dog that lives downstairs. And when the dog is calm, the cortex or the wise owl can come and land and help you make good choices. It can help you regulate your self-control. Uh, it can help you um, whenever you're taking a test, whenever you're making a drawing, when you're playing an instrument, the wise owl is what helps with that. But when the dog gets upset and angry, it barks. And when it barks, the owl flies away because the owl likes a calm environment. The owl doesn't really like to be around a barking dog. And so when the dog is barking, the cortex does not engage. Your logical thinking, your self-control, you might make some poor choices. And this happens, this is not just for students. This happens to adults. This happens, this can happen to anyone. And so the thing about the barking dog is, the barking dog doesn't belong to a stranger. I mean, if we see a barking dog somewhere and it doesn't belong to me, I'm. it's not safe to go up to the barking dog. But this barking dog is actually mine. And so I wanna try to calm this barking dog down. And to do that, I can't yell at it. I can't say, stop the barking, calm down. Why are you making all this noise? What I have to do to calm this barking dog down is I have to slow down I have to kind of lower my voice and get a little curious, try to figure out why is this dog barking this loud? Why am I feeling this way? Maybe I'm, I'm stressed out about something, maybe something happened to me, but for some reason my body is, is not calm right now. So why is that? One of the best ways to calm the barking dog is to take some deep breaths. So sometimes you can do a breath, for example, you can breathe in, in, out, out. So that would sound something like this. And that helps calm the barking dog down. Another way to calm the barking dog is to do something called swing breathing. Now, I'm not sure about you, but on the playground, one of my favorite things are swings and so when I think about swing breathing, what I think about is, you know, the part of the swing when you're going down and then there's this moment where you're kind of actually still. 
before you start swinging the other direction back again and forth. And so with swing breathing, what we do is we take a deep breath, we're gonna bring it in, we're gonna pause and then exhale out. When we get to the other side, we're gonna pause and then we're gonna inhale again. So try this with me. helps. Usually three, you can do it as many times as you want. To calm my barking dog, breathing really helps me. So whether it's the inhale, two inhales in and two exhales out, or I try the swing breathing, if I do it two times and my barking dog is still growling, still a little upset, I can try breathing a little bit more. Sometimes finding a quiet space, sometimes closing my eyes or just looking at one object and just kind of slowly slowly calming that dog down. And when the dog comes down, the owl, when the dog is calm, the owl gets to come back. And the owl comes back and it knows that it's safe because the dog is calm. Now that the owl is back, my brain can make good decisions. I can have good conversations with friends or with people I work with. My ideas start to flow a little bit better. But if I get anxious or something happens and I start to get upset, sometimes you can start to hear that dog growling and you think, oh, my body. For me, I get pressure in my chest sometimes whenever I have some anxiety or I'm starting to get upset. It starts to feel like someone is actually kind of pushing on my chest. And when I feel that, I think, oh, wait a minute, that barking dog, he might, he might wake up. He might be getting a little upset. And so what I can do is I can try to calm him down early. I can say, hey, you seem a little restless. What's going on? Or sometimes something big happens and that barking dog, he's just, he is just up and the, the owl says, see you later. And the owl leaves. But again, this barking dog and the owl, they both belong to me. They're mine. And the owl wants to come back and stay, but I have to make sure I can calm down that barking dog. And to calm it down, I can't yell at him. I have to say, hey, I see you're having a hard time. What's going on? Recently, someone said that you have to become an emotional detective. So a detective is trying to figure out what feelings are going on here. Did something happen? And a lot of times the emotional detective can work best when, an, when they're in a quiet space. If I'm having a hard time with my barking dog, I can always ask an adult if they can help me figure out what's going on. It's okay to have another emotional detective with you. You don't have to do this all by yourself. You have the upstairs part of your brain and the downstairs part of your brain. And both of these animals belong to you. The dog belongs to you and the owl belongs to you. They like to stay together to work, but if the dog gets loud and the dog starts barking and the owl goes away, be an emotional detective. Try to figure out what's going on. Check in with that barking dog. Why might that dog be upset? Are there breathing strategies that you can use or that I can use to help calm that down so that the owl can come back and help me make good choices? I'm always proud of students and colleagues that can listen to that barking dog and calm it down.